These Shia protesters in Bahrain had gone to the streets to protest against the death sentence given to two men who'd been convicted of terrorism-related charges. On Saturday, the government executed Ali Al Arab and Ahmad Al Malali, who were in their 20s. It said they were guilty of breaking into a prison, killing a police officer and carrying illegal firearms. But their families say they were coerced into false confessions. The uh, prisoners' families uh, revealed that their, uh, um, their prisoners were uh, tortured. Uh, and one of them, that's uh, Al Arab, he was on wheelchair during the, the period when he was in the in jail. On Friday, a protester climbed on top of the Bahraini embassy building in London, calling on Britain's new Prime Minister Boris Johnson to intervene. International human rights groups had warned against the executions and called Bahrain's actions shameful. A last-minute appeal by the United Nations Special Repertoire on Extrajudicial Killings was ignored. Agnes Kalamard said the men were allegedly tortured, prevented from attending their trial and sentenced to death in absentia. But the Bahraini embassy in Washington compared it to capital punishment in the US, adding the trials were conducted in accordance with the laws of the Kingdom of Bahrain, which maintain international standards. The decision to execute these two young men came one day after the United States announced that they were going to start um, federal executions again, which, of course, when you know the politics in the Gulf, you know that um, the Gulf states always feel like they need a green light to commit the violations that they commit from their allies in the West. Some see the executions as yet another crackdown on Shias and the opposition by Bahrain's Sunni-led government. Since the 2011 Arab Spring protests, hundreds of people demanding political reform, as well as human rights activists, have been jailed, silenced or forced to move abroad. Sara Khairat, Al Jazeera.